okay. Well, dear members of the panel and ladies and gentlemen, I'm very happy to see you here in such a large number. First of all, I want to express my gratitude for being invited to this event today, because in light of the upcoming Belgian presidency of the Council, this is a great opportunity for me to reiterate the importance of the European Asylum and Migration Pact. For more than a decade now, the European Union has been discussing the introduction of a predictable, a sustainable and a fair system for migrants, asylum seekers and refugees. And based on the Commission's 2020 proposals, the various legislative proposals were brought together into a new pact on asylum and migration. Now, this pact offers a comprehensive approach to strengthen and integrate key European policies on international protection, on legal migration and on border management. Of course, Belgium supports the general approach taking in the Pact on Asylum and Migration, including the strong and well-organized management of the external borders and procedures and a predictable solidarity based on fair share principles. We aim for a reform that is thorough and ambitious. Now, I cannot mention enough that this pact is key because the pact will ensure more common management of migration. We have to avoid member states passing the challenges to each other. Each member state has to take its responsibility and if the situation so requires, show solidarity with each other. And through the new border procedure, we would quickly distinguish between people fleeing war and violence and those coming to the EU for purely economic reasons. In this way, we would avoid people with no chance of recognition spending years in our asylum system and remaining in the EU without legal residence permit, which often lets them end up in very vulnerable situations. In the coming months, the Union will have a unique opportunity, a unique opportunity to make that reform a reality and to finalize the pact. And from January onwards, I will do so in the driver's seat as President of the Council dealing with asylum and migration. And I am fully aware, ladies and gentlemen, of the huge responsibility that will rest on our shoulders because now is the time. Now is the time for a united Europe, a united Europe to work on an asylum policy that protects those in need of it and a migration policy that attracts talents to our labor market markets and to our universities and we really have no time to lose there of course this is only what we can do together as european member states this is only half of the story besides this internal dimension of our asylum and migration policy we cannot neglect the external di dimension, our relationships with third countries, which might be even more sensitive nowadays. And quite obviously, media and political attention these days often goes to this external dimension. And can we or should we have a deal with this or that country? How to shape these partnerships with third countries? How do we address root causes and much has been said about the so-called tunisia deal a deal signed by the commission with a strategic partner and although the migration part of this deal gets most attention what the deal is really about is to help tunisia a country with major problems to build a full-fledged state with economic opportunities for its own people and for migrants. These measures will ensure stability. So in my view, the agreement is about addressing root causes, labor creation, green transition, education. And this is what distinguishes this deal, this partnership from, for example, the 2016 agreement with Turkey. The memorandum of understanding with Tunisia goes much broader than mere migration policy. At the same time, I support the pragmatic approach taken so far in our relations with Tunisia. It is important to encourage long-term reforms, but at the same time, we must prevent the country from collapsing in the short term without losing sight of our fundamental values.
Now, the EU should, in my opinion, dare to look wider and work for integrated partnerships with various third countries, covering more than just migration. We need to establish balanced and sustainable relationships in which migration management is an important but not the only component. And within migration management, it is not only about managing borders, but also about setting up structures for international protection and for returns towards third countries of those without residence permits. To conclude, I cannot stress enough the importance of moving towards a more common European policy on asylum and migration, both in the internal as well as in the external dimension. We need to move towards this common policy. Current events show that these reforms are needed. To so take my own country as an example, as you might know, it has been under high pressure since some years, for long periods of time, in fact, since the summer of 2021. And one point I would like to make here is that the crisis we are facing today is different than previous ones, because what we are seeing today is not a peak in demands. It is an elevation that has become the new normal, and this makes durable reforms even more important. And if we don't reach an agreement, each member state will, will fall back on its own. In that case, migration could even threaten European unity. But with an agreement, we show European citizens that we take their concerns seriously that we are stronger together, that we can protect those in need, and that we can organize migration in an organized and a controlled way. And I will therefore do everything possible to reach agreements in the months to come. And so we are at a crossroads, ladies and gentlemen. We have the opportunity to have an impact, both at the European as well as on the national level. But we have a a responsibility to, to European citizens and to migrants and asylum seekers alike, to show that we can do better. That is why I cannot stress enough how important the last couple of months have been, because there truly has been this sense of urgency in the Council around the table with all ministers who realize the enormous responsibility that lies on our shoulders. And that is why I am not afraid to refer to the Council meeting of last June as revolutionary, because it was revolu revolutionary for several reasons. First, when adopting a position on the asylum procedure regulation and the asylum and migration management regulation, the Council did what ministers have been debating for years. It is our lack of an agreement that has made us weak in previous years, weak against smugglers and weak against corrupt regimes. And secondly, and much more importantly, we have found an agreement on a substantive reform of the European asylum system. For the first time ever, there is an agreement among member states on a compulsory border procedure in all European countries. And for the first time, there is an agreement among member states for a compulsory solidarity for the reception and treatment of asylum seekers in the European Union. And of course, we can all say that this is not a perfect deal. That is rarely the case when 27 member states with such divergent interests and geographical positions have to reach agreements on a topic as sensitive as asylum and migration. And yes, the job is not yet finished. The Council position is the basis for negotiations by the Council presidency with the European Parliament. So we are not there yet, but you may have sensed that my expectations for the time to come are rather high. Achieving a substantive reform of our common asylum and migration policy is for me a personal commitment for which I look forward to closely work together with the distinguished members of this panel of this afternoon. It's clear, ladies and gentlemen, we need to find European solutions for European problems. And I thank you for your attention.